Welcome back to Star Trek Online, everybody. I am your host, the House Code Gamer. It is time for the night of the comet. Which, of course, still hasn't been updated with its whole. reason to get my hands on to play this mission. Although, oops. <laughs> oops. That was uh, a mistake. But yeah, I'm flying around in the Prometheus class. Well, really, this is the Hestia advanced escort, but uh, I prefer the Prometheus. The Hestia just looks like a... Well, the bastard child of a Prometheus and one of the Command battle cruisers. I hate those things. Uh, they're incredibly confusing, and you're... And I'm never sure... What is the best way to use them? Do I actually mount cannons do them? That doesn't make any sense. Those things aren't exactly agile. But what about, uh... Well, I just treat it like a cruiser, because it's not exactly agile. In fact... I hate Section 31, just pure and simple. But this is one of the few times where I get to fly around in a D7, even if in reality it's just a holographic skin. To the past! I'm gonna take you back to the past. <laughs> uh, AVGN. I love the nerd. The nerd is awesome. But while this game has problems, it does not suck ass. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Gliese system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Unless you can prove you are not, we will take immediate action. Oh, this is convenient. God damn it. Drake. Code. 
But honestly, Cryptic has never redone this mission other than the most casual touch-ups, such as, uh, well, adding voice acting to some people. Such as the bartender. And a certain person that we're going to be meeting very soon.
Hey, those things are holed up in the lounge, and they've got some of my customers in there with them. The door is barricaded, but a few hits with a phaser should take care of that. Get my people out of there! With pleasure. After all, someone incredibly important and awesome is in that room. And I don't intend to lose someone that awesome. spike in triadic energy, and I was working to adjust the station shields to compensate. I went to fetch a hyperspanner, and I was attacked! If you help me, I can finish my repairs before the triadic energy reaches lethal levels. By the way, you can call me Scotty. Scotty! Mr. Scott is... was portrayed by James Doohan, who is sadly deceased. However... His son, Chris Doohan, decided to take up his father's reins and voice the man. The legend. His dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help that. Just as I suspected, the triolic energy is increasing. We'll be cooked like a haggis if we don't do something about it. There is a wee store on this station. The last who runs it, Cassidy, said they might be getting a supply of the new quantum flux regulators. The Mark II versions. If we had one of those regulators, I could modify the flux coordinating sensors and use them to modulate the shields protecting the station. That would buy us some time. Go find Cassidy. She'll know where they are. Orders from Scotty. I will gladly obey. Yeah, I'm very much a TOS fan. In fact, I pretty much started with TOS, which is kind of why STD tends to sicken me. Oh, what were those things? They were floating, and, and one looked at me, and I, I felt so weak. And... And then, it, it lifted me up, and... Oh, it was horrible! Oh, are you looking for something from the store? A quantum what? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just too scared right now to think about selling anything. I'm closing down until I get me wits about me. Maybe it would be best if I packed up and went back to Sherman's planet. I don't know. Oh, I... Do you have a drink for me? <laughs> Anyway, that's new. Very new. What can I get you? A nerve tonic? Almost every culture in the galaxy has nerve tonics. 
Most worlds have multiple variations, and everyone thinks that the one their grandmother made is better than all the rest. Look, I tend bar at a commerce station in the middle of one of this quadrant's busiest trade routes. It's my job to be able to make anything you want, but uh, you gotta be specific. I could make you 14,647 different nerve tonics, 18,397 if you're bullying. So, uh, what kind do you want? Bartenders. Tell you what, one of the waitresses should be able to help you narrow down what kind of nerve tonic would be best. Talk to one of them, and then come back. I'm sure we can make exactly what you need. Who do you think you are? First the lights go all strange, then these weird creatures show up, and worst of all, you're here picking fights with my best customers. Look at dear, brave, handsome Captain McQueen here. He could have been killed. You should be ashamed of yourself. Nerve tonics. How can I think about nerve tonics when my sweet Captain McQueen is injured? Well, if you want to know about any sort of exotic beverage, go ask that drunken Scotsman. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant I heard Scott. that. He knows more about alcohol than anyone I've ever met. While you do that, I'm going to make my sweet prince all better. Okay, that was just rather disturbing. Anyway... She does have a point. If there's anyone that knows booze... It's the god of engineering. How do you think he's such a miracle worker? Did you get the quantum flux regulator? Nerve tonics? Ugh! You don't look like you need one of those! These wee beasties are troublesome, but they're not as bad as a ship full of anger or amulets. Now, I have been known to enjoy an occasional nip of scotch whiskey. That's the only nerve tonic you'll ever need. Why do you need to know about them? Oh, for Cassidy. Now that makes sense. She's a bonnie lass, that Cassidy. And more than willing to spend a little time with the right Starfleet officer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but she hasn't got the stomach for fighting. Is she alright? I hate for anything to happen to her. Glad to hear it. Sounds like she needs something to take a wee bit of the edge off. And that happens to be one of my specialties. Along with transwarp transporter technology and warp field mechanics. <laughs> Cassidy's been meeting me every evening in the bar for a spot of cheer. But I've never seen her water a nerve tonic. Perhaps if I told you what she likes, you'll be able to figure out the right mix. The bartender will help you. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy didn't like the salty taste of the Albion brandy, but she really enjoyed the fact that it was garnished with a drop of honey that floated on the top of the drink. Bah, garnish is getting in the way of a fine beverage, if you ask me. Can you imagine putting a wee piece of pineapple in a glass of 20-year-old single malt? It's preposterous. Agreed. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. The only time I saw Cassidy ordering blood wine was when she was feeling under the weather. Poor lass. She liked that it was served warm, but she hated those blasted heavy metal mugs the Klingons use. And the potency of it was a bit much for her to handle. A girl like Cassidy needs something with a little less kick. Blood wine. <laughs> Gotta love Klingons. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Zelay brought Cassidy a Denevian mead a few nights ago. Ugh, terribly sweet stuff. Like drinking syrup. Cassidy didn't like the cloying sweetness, and the wee bird broke out into highs because she was allergic to the fruit garnish. I'm not ordering any of that stuff again. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassie and I got into a drinking contest with a Klingon one night, and we ended up drinking fire wine. It's not as good as scotch, mind you, but it's better than drinking warp core coolant. Who isn't? The next morning, after she picked herself up off the floor, Cassidy told me that the fire wine was so spicy that she was afraid that it had eaten a hole through her stomach. I had to send her to see Bones for a checkup. Also, she said that drinking from those shallow bowls made her feel like someone's pet targ. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Martinis aren't my cup of tea, as it were, but Cassidy seems to like them. She appreciates that a martini should be served as cold as possible, but since she nurses her drinks, the cold tends to dissipate, and she doesn't get the full effect. She's quite fond of those fancy stem glasses, though. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes the little pick-me-up of a drop of Gagarian whiskey, but she doesn't like the wee shot glasses or the silly paper umbrellas. 
Who ever heard of putting a wee paper umbrella in a glass of whiskey? It's sacrilege. If I ever go to Skagara, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes the Sumerian sunsets, mostly because of the sour taste. She hates that the drink is so weak, and has been trying to convince the bartender to add garnish to it, to make the happy feeling last longer. But he won't, because then it wouldn't be a Sumerian sunset. Me? I say a drink is a drink. If the lady wants a garnish, give her one. I've seen Cassidy order. Now it's time to get myself booze. Of course, I'm never going to pay the tab. <laughs> What can I get you? I'll need some more details before I can make a drink for you. If you need help figuring out what combination of ingredients you want, you should talk to one of the waitresses. That's what they're here for, after all. So, do you want it to be hot or cold? What kind of flavor profile are you looking for? How strong do you want this drink to be? How would you like this drink to be, sir? And last but certainly not least, what kind of garnish would you like? This should be all the info I need. I'll put the drink on the bar when I'm done. I'll put the bill on your tab. Do you have a drink for me? Oh, I love warm drinks. They're so relaxing. Oh. <laughs> There's a lovely sour note to this drink. I feel so refreshed. Oh, there's just enough oof to this drink to make it really stick with you. I like that. Oh, I love the style of this glass. It accentuates the flavor of the ingredients. Honey! No, not you. <laughs> the drink. <laughs> oh, that little bit of sweetness is just perfect. It adds the most delightful note to each sip. Ah! It is marvelous. Oh, I'm feeling much better now, thank you. All righty. What tool was it you needed? Oh, the Quantum Flux Regulator Mark II. I have one of those right here. Please, take it as a thank you. Che Whoops. They really need to update their text. Not to mention this book mission is very important to the TOS. The right tool for the right job. I'll start making the adjustments, but I don't know if I've got enough time. You can't change the laws of physics. The trialic energy levels keep rising, and since they show, the blasted comet is to blame. Modulating the shields is not going to be enough. Something needs to be done about that comet if we're going to live to see the morning. With pleasure, your scottiness. And I've got just the ship to do it. A ship from the house of Duras! I am Captain Bavat, son of Warat, and leader of my house! My brother died due to Duras' treachery! I will avenge his death with the destruction of a hundred Duras ships! Prepare to die! Really? Why? Why does this guy show up? Why must he be a pain?
If you are receiving this message, then you and your crew have completed your mission. Driffen's Comet is destroyed, and the Davidians are no longer a threat to the Federation. You've done well. And, to prove that I'm not the immoral monster that some make me out to be, I'm going to help you. When you last docked at Deep Space K-7, I had some modifications made to your vessel. One of those is the addition of a Borg temporal node salvaged from a cube in the Batron Cluster. It's set to return you to our time. Congratulations on a job well done. Drake out. Let's do the time warp again. There are very few times I am ever going to make that joke. Excellent work. I knew I could count on you. The disappearance of Driffen's Comet in the 23rd century will be a scientific curiosity. I have taken steps to suppress information that might reveal our involvement, and I trust that you and your crew will refrain from telling stories about what happened here. After all, we're getting along so well. One thing I hope you'll take away from all this is that any opinion you may have of the immorality of so-called rogue elements like Section 31 is a bit naive. Contrary to popular opinion among some Starfleet officers, we do not spend our days plotting evil and committing random acts of villainy like characters in a bad hollow novel. We protect the Federation from threats. Thanks to you, the Davidians are no longer on that list. If you think about it, everything we do is to preserve the freedoms you so enjoy. You should be grateful. Drake out. Until next time. Yeah. But be just because Section 31 does a very good job doesn't mean I have to like them. The same can be said for any intelligence agency. Such as the CIA. But for now, the Starfleet side of things is over. House Code Gaming. We'll see you later.